it's MK. Welcome back. So today's Sim series video was born like a lot of them have been. I had a scenario while working on a quilt in my studio and it had to do with point to point triangles that fit inside of a flying geese unit. And I thought, you know, as I'm working through this, I want to share this knowledge with my followers. So I got permission from the quilt's owner to do a little bit of video recording. I, I'm going to take you inside a simulation, show you how I approached this whole project, and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, let's get started. Once again, what you're looking at on the screen is the line drawing of our quilt, and what we're focusing on today is the border pieced with these lovely flying geese units. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my line drawing and I'm going to open up just a segment of this border so that we can focus in closer on what we're working on today. All right, so here we go. We have six of our little geese unit units um, isolated here and here's our little point-to-point -point triangle unit. Now most of us are probably familiar with point-to-point -point triangles that are oriented in this fashion, okay, where maybe the start point is over here, it goes through the pattern, and it ends over here. Okay, so this one is specifically designed to fit in a flying geese unit, so the point-to-point -point goes this way. Now the problem is if we're at our quilt and we put our machine into position and we try to position one of these geese, let's just outright position it by positioning it on start point there. If we try to reposition that and then we try to go into repeat, so if we go and try to repeat six of them and make sure we're on point to point, most likely what's going to happen is that these units are not going to fit, okay? Um, the geese unit that we're working with today is a two by four inch unit, okay? So I had started by resizing my flying geese block and then I, I proceeded, okay? But it's not, it's not going to work out very well for us with repeat. And even if we try to reposition, nudge one way or the other, if we try to mark an area for all six of these, we're, we're just not going to be able to get those within the points. All right, so repeating in this particular case is not going to be uh, our best option, okay? Because we already know there's probably some variance in the piecing of our blocks, maybe, at, you know, the border's a little crooked, what have you, okay? So let's just close. We know that that's not what we're going to want to do. What we're going to do is we're going to place each one of these units separately. Then we're going to go back and do a little bit of adjusting on them, whether we have to resize or rotate or whatever we have to do. And then we're going to go back and connect them together. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our, our goose unit. I've already um, pre-sized it to two by four. All right, I'm working from within simulation. You guys remember, you would be at your machine, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get this one placed and sized appropriately. Once we get that one placed and sized, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the rest of them loosely where they belong, and then we're going to go back and we're going to adjust every single one. Okay, yes, that is going to take some time, but we love this little unit, and we want it to fit perfectly in our flying geese, and we want to learn our Pro Stitcher software in the process. So we're willing to take a little bit of time to get each one of these units placed correctly, aren't we? All right, let's do it. I'm just going to use three points. And if I was at my quilt, that is probably what I would do. Now, when I'm working with triangles and marking, a lot of times I'm marking a little bit further away from my seam line than I normally would. That allows me to use a fewer number of marks and just get that triangle loosely placed inside. All right, so in each one of these triangles, as I move along, I'm only going to do three marks. You can do more if you feel the need, but if you just kind of err on the side of making this unit a little bit smaller than it needs to be, you're going to be able to use fewer marks, and you're just going to make the whole process go a little bit quicker. All right, my area is defined. My unit is open. Let's do modify, align. Let's align it to the left and to the center. We know that we're not able to use skew most of the time with triangles, so let's just try it. Nope, skew one doesn't work. 
Nope, SKU 2 doesn't work. Okay, so what we're going to be using is the Modify Align tool to get all of these um, units where they need to be. Okay, once I've aligned it to the left and to the center, I'm going to go ahead and make some resizing um, adjustments. Okay. Once I get it within the purple box, I'm going to go ahead and baseline. And then just to make my steps a little bit quicker, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate these and position that in the center. Every single geese. I just want to get that, that unit loosely um, placed where it needs to be. And then I can have it there when I need it. Now that duplicate step, you can obviously go back and mark your area, open up the pattern, drop it in there. Mark an area, open up a new pattern, drop it in there. Mark an area, open up a new pattern, drop it in there. Okay, so it's, it's like you're accomplishing the same thing. I just like to drop the pattern in there before I get started, and then I can move on. Okay, let's just go ahead and clear our area. I'm going to do this next part. Um, and I'm going to have Mr. MK fast forward through this, and I'm going to get all of these units marked and placed where they belong. Okay, I'm just going to stop right here and show you that sometimes, for whatever reason, we don't have baseline as an option after we've positioned something. So here's just a little trick, a little tip, uh, and there might be a fix on this baseline issue coming in a further release. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a select none, and then I'm going to go right back and select that unit, and just by doing that, you'll see that I have baseline available to me again. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure why that's happening with the baseline, but um, just be aware that you can just deselect it, go back and select it, and then you should be able to have baseline. One of the other things that hopefully you're noticing is that I have tried to train myself, now that we have this wonderful workspace option, to choose my units off of the workspace. And one of the reasons why that works so well for me, and especially for teaching, is that I use these line drawings as visual representations. And sometimes when I'm in simulation with a line drawing open, I'm accidentally selecting the line drawing. Okay, so it's just, it's just easier to select what I'm trying to select by working off of the workspace. Okay, I'm going to go through and complete the rest of these positionings. On this last flying geese unit, I want to just um, show you a couple of things about rotation. Sometimes just doing the alignment is, is not going to be exactly what you need. Sometimes you're going to have to adjust each individual li little unit by resizing it, or maybe you're going to have to rotate it. Now, if you decide that you want to rotate an item, just be be aware of the fact that when you go over to modify and align, when you do that align left and align center, what you want to do is go ahead and undepress those. So turn it on, turn it off. And then when you go back to rotate, the rotate function will likely work for you. Okay, so if you're feeling like rotate is not working, it's probably because under align you had your horizontal or vertical one of those buttons locked on, and that was battling against your rotation functionality. Okay, so let's pretend that that looks like what it needs to be, even though it doesn't. We're just kind of, um, we're demonstrating the rotation functionality. Okay, so we'll pretend that that's what we want, clear the area, we're all done. Okay, now you can see on the screen that these are actually quite a bit undersized compared to my line drawing, but I want you to understand that I'm going through this quickly in, in simulation. When you're at your quilt, you would take care to get each one of those sized and, uh, 
and aligned and rotated, resized, whatever it needed to be for each of those units. Okay, let's look at our workspace. Here's all of our units. They've all been placed. What we want to do now is we want to go ahead and select just these geese unit because we want to take them into Art and Stitch and collect and connect them. Okay, my geese for working is my line drawing. So I'm not going to select that, but I'm going to select my, my sele multiple select tool and let's go down the line one right after the other and we'll just select them and then we're going to go ahead. There we go. So we've got all of them selected. We'll go ahead and baseline them together as a unit. Okay, let's go ahead and rename that guy. And naming it doesn't save it. If you've taken my online classes, you know we talk about that a lot. So we're calling it Geese Working. Okay, time to jump on over to Art and Stitch. All right, with, with a new workspace open in Art and Stitch, let's just go ahead and open what we had been working on. There's our Geese Working. We're going to check box that, and we're also going to convert to outline so that we can make adjustments. All right, here's our units. Let's go ahead and look under Sequence View and open this up. Now, I'm not going to go into an in-depth explanation in Art and Stitch for this purposes of this video. What I want to just explain to you is that I'm just using a couple of functions inside of Art and Stitch to go ahead and get these back connected. And that is going to be the Connect Objects tool. Okay, we can do it either with stitches attached I just did a select all to select all of these guys. And then if we do a right click, we can do connect object. And that connects the lines together without having removed any of the stitching that is currently applied to this. And now we have all of those geese unit that were specifically placed, specifically rotated and resized and aligned. All of that work was done in Pro Stitcher because that placement work related to our quilt. So this step in Art and Stitch is very important that you don't grab any one of those units and push it back to the left or up or down or rotate it. We don't want to do anything in Art and Stitch at this step except connect them together. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's do a file save as. We're going to switch it back over to HQF. We're going to call it geese I don't know I'm just okay we don't care about the hoop right now so we're gonna say yes okay let's hop back over to our pro stitcher okay now these geese unit in pro stitcher at our quilt are not the ones that we want because those are not connected. Now, before we close these guys, a very important mark spot for us is going to be right there. So we want to go ahead and run our machine into position over that first jump or over that first start point. Okay, needle down, needle up. We're going to put a pin in our quilt or we're just going to leave our machine right there with our needle right over that spot. Now we can just stop we can close this grouping because they're not connected. Now, my machine's in position. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the ones that we created in Art and Stitch. There's our geese Art and Stitch fixed. We're going to open it. Okay, there's my start point. My machine is in position. Let's just go ahead and modify, reposition, snap that on start point, and now my geese unit are perfectly in position. Now, one other step that I had taken in, in the little preview video that I had sent you was I did some, some record to do some outline, straight line outlining of these blocks. So really quickly, I went under Pro Stitcher Record and here is the mark function that I'm going to use. Okay, so all I did was come along my seam line and I made a mark and then I think I came this way. Down along the bottom of the goose, did another mark. Came up a little bit, did a mark. 
up here, did a mark over a little bit. What I was trying to do was get myself about a quarter of an inch away from the goose, from the block, and then again up to the next one. And I just kept marking, mark, mark, mark. This is our freehand record functionality, which I, as, as not a very gifted free motion person, I don't really use that feature a lot to record my own, you know, fancy, fancy designs, but I do use it a lot for like stitch in the ditch and straight line marking. Okay, so again, I'm going to go through and finish up these marks. And we'll just have Mr. MK put this on fast forward. All right, here we go, coming up to the last. And my marks are not great inside simulation. It's a little bit more difficult to do that. But you get the idea is that I went along after I had gotten all of my blocks connected and did that marking. Okay, so now if we look at our workspace, what we have is the geese and we have this little freehand uh, marking that I just did. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and select these together. What I want to do is I want to select my geese first. I would like my geese to stitch first, and then I am going to select my free hand. Okay, so just kind of understand when you're working with workspace and you're working with the multiple select tool that the order in which you select things is creating your stitching order. Okay, so you'll notice that I had first selected the geese and then I selected the free hand. Just to show the difference, let's do it the other way. Let's go, go and select our multiple select tool. This time let's select the free hand first and then the geese. And so do you see in this particular case, it would stitch the free hand first and then the geese unit next. Okay, it doesn't necessarily matter in this in this case. I just want you to understand what's happening with the multiple select tool when you're working off the off of the workspace. Okay, I think I would rather have my geese stitch and then my outlining. So I'm going to redo that. I'm going to select the geese, then I'm going to select the free hand. And I forgot to select my select tool. Okay. So I am going to first select the geese and then the free hand and then I'll baseline it and then I'll save it. And if you're like me, and we talk about this a lot in my online classes, I am a person who likes to save before I stitch, especially if I've skewed anything or if I've done anything like this where I've created a very specific block. So let's just call this our geese grouping. Okay, I've, cre I've taken a lot of time right now to do all of that marking and connecting of that, and then I went back and did all that freehand. I don't want to start stitching until I have saved that, okay? All right, so we saved it. Now we're ready to stitch, okay? Now there's my first start point. It's going to go through and it's going to stitch all of those geese because that's what we connected together in Art and & Stitch. And then there is going to be a jump when it gets to the end of that last geese unit right there. It's going to stop. It's going to want us to trim our threads. And then it'll jump over and it'll do that straight line echo stitching around that. Pretty cool, huh? Very, very simple step to do in Art & Stitch. Okay, I want to move on really quickly and talk to you about that, that uh, empty spot in that border that we had open at the beginning of our session. And I'll talk you through really quickly how I continued this motif, this flying geese motif, into a border unit that I created. Okay, I'm going to go through this next part pretty quickly. 
what I wanted to do in this open area of this border was continue the motif and make a unit that I could fill in that resembled what I had already done in the pieced part of the border. But what I was dealing with, or what I was working with rather, was one little flying geese unit. And it was not surrounded by the triangles. So I want to show you how I did that really quickly inside of Art and Stitch. And then I came back here to repeat it to look like this, and then I duplicated it to look like this. Let's do that really quickly. All right, so inside of Art and Stitch, all I did was open my little goose unit. I created a triangle. And I did that by just pulling in a triangle right from Art and Stitch, and I resized it to approximately the same the same size. Okay, the first thing is you can see one is a run pattern. In other words, it has stitches on it, and one is an artwork. So what we want to do first is go ahead and change both of these so that they're artwork. And to do that, I just did a select all, which is Control A on your keyboard. Here's my back to artwork button. And then, just like we did before, we're going to right-click and we're going to do that Connect Object. And you can see that a little bitty line was just created between the Flying Geese unit and the triangle, which had a start and stop point right at that spot. All right, so right now it's still an artwork. Let's go ahead and put some stitches on it, which is that little guy right there. And let's test how it's going to stitch out. So it does the flying geese unit, and then it goes and does the triangle. That's what we want. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's save it as HQF. Let's save it as our geese 2 by 4 with triangle. And then let's go back over to Pro Stitcher, and you'll see how easily it is to connect these together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave this open on the screen. Let's just go ahead and pull in that geese 2 by 4 with triangle unit. Here it is. And now it's a brand new repeatable design. Let me just drag it down here and watch what I'm going to do on the screen. I'm just going to treat this now like a point-to-point -point pattern. I'm going to go into repeat, and I went ahead and I repeated it however many times that I needed to. All right, and in this particular case, I had gone ahead and figured out how many I needed on this side and how many I needed on that side, okay? So that's how I got myself to this little unit right here. Once I had that unit created, I went ahead and duplicated it over onto the other side. I made myself an area so that I could get that all aligned and I went ahead and connected it together. Then when I was at my quilt, I could just take this long unit right here, I could just come up with my machine, multi-point mark my border, and just drop it right in there, okay? So again, I, I skipped over some steps there, I just kind of talked you through it, but I want you to take what you've learned in this and some of my other videos and see if you can't get yourself from that point through the Art and Stitch steps to get yourself to a new point-to-point -point unit, connect them together, duplicate them, put them together, and you've created for yourself a whole new design that you can use right up here in your border. All right, everybody, that's it for this session. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to take this further, learn other tips and techniques from MK, please make sure to check out my online video training store at mkquilts.com. I appreciate you coming along today, and from MK to you, happy quilting. Bye-bye. Still small voice cries out to my soul. Come, come my love. So there you have it. 
We were able to place all of those units at our Pro Stitcher and then take them into Art and & Stitch and connect them so we can stitch it all as one nice unit. That little piece there of Art & Stitch is so, so very valuable. You know, I've mentioned it before. I'm not really an expert in Art & Stitch, but that connect object function is very simple and it can be applied to a lot of different scenarios in our studios. I also use this functionality inside of my online series in the class Layout and Rendering number two. In that class, I use that connect object function to connect L-shaped connected corners. So think about that one a little bit. And if you're interested in any of my online sessions, head on over to mkquilts.com, click on the video training store, and order yourself up some of my videos. And I appreciate your support and you following me here on YouTube. All right, everybody, until next time, from MK to you, happy quilting. Bye-bye.